welcome. This is Ink Pads 101. <laughs> I have quite the uh, plethora of ink pads here today. We're going to look at dye based inks, pigment based inks, hybrid inks, solvent based inks. There's, it can be really overwhelming to, to like, where do you even begin? So this video is going to be all about uh, ink pads and different uses for them, when, when and why you would use one over another in different circumstances. And if you're a beginner, um, I'll give you like my top favorites. If you are um, kind of intermediate, maybe you'll learn, a, you'll, learn, you'll learn something here or there. And if you feel like you're an advanced stamper, I would love any information from you. So if you want to chime in in the comments about your favorites or um, your, even, let's be real, all of, some of us have had stamping fails. So share those in the comments too. Win or lose, you know, we all, it's all just paper, right? So we're just going to figure it out together. But this is going to be stamp or ink pads 101. So I'm Janine. I'm the paper crafts buyer for Craft Warehouse. And I'm excited today to show you some of these. Um, uh, usually when, if you're a beginner, you're very attracted to the pretty colors, right? Um, but usually, most often, um, the majority of the time when you're stamping something, an image, you're probably going to use a black ink. And there's a lot of different black inks to choose from, and that can be overwhelming. So we're going to start there with the different black inks, and then we'll go into different kinds of ink and get into the colors and stuff. Okay. Hi, Amy. Yay. Hi, Leona. Welcome guys. Okay, so let's talk about black inks first. There's a lot of different kinds. And for some of us, we could say, well, I, I need every one of these. <laughs> because every all inks are not made the same. There are different kinds for a reason, right? So um, what I have right here in this little group of six, I've got the archival ink from Ranger. I've got the Brilliance pigment ink from Sukuniko, also known as Imagine Crafts. I've got Versacraft. I've got Memento. Hero Arts Intense Black and Versifying. Now also in dyes and pigments, you're also gonna find black. Um, what am I missing from this pile? I am missing stays on. Okay, there should be a stays on black over there, but I just have a white. <laughs> okay, let's, I'm gonna scoot some of the stuff out of the way, just a little bit, just get some room here. I know, so pretty, right? Pretty colors. Okay, let's look at, let's, ooh, that's loud. Let's focus on these black. I've got some white, just some plain white cardstock. Now I'm going to be stamping on just, all of my examples today are gonna to be just plain, smooth, white cardstock. Um, you can obviously stamp on all kinds of papers. Smooth is certainly better as opposed to a texture because depending on the detail of your stamp, you may or may not be able to see, uh, how you might may or may not be able to get a crisp image. So starting with clean, um, smooth paper is definitely a great way to um, really test out your inks. Okay, and then you just need some stamps. I'm using uh, these super cute B stamps from Say It With Stamps. And this has, um, also there's, uh, I've got this, these word stamps from um, Say It With Stamps as well. So we're gonna be playing with those on most everything. The stamp doesn't matter that much because you can use rubber stamps, cling stamps, clear stamps, whatever it is, the inks are all going to work on all of those. Okay. Let me grab, let me grab this white, um, paper here. And we're going to start with my absolute favorite ink. This one, this is a Versafine. Uh, this is the Onyx black color. They've recently redone the pad. So it, the, the, the lid completely comes off, but I still have the old hinge one but the ink itself is the same. The reason this is my favorite and my go-to for black ink is because it's a pigment slash oil-based ink. And so it is very, very fine ink and it captures all the details of your stamped image, whether it's a very bold image or a very, very detailed image. Also, it lasts three to five times longer than any other ink pad. Okay, bonus, right? Um, and it's so juicy that you could leave the lid off overnight and it would still be fresh and ready to go the next day. That's how juicy it is. It really does last a long, long time. So I'm going to ink with this one. All of the pads that I'm using and all the pads that Craft Warehouse sells have a raised, can we see that? A raised pad, whether it's foam or cloth. This one is a foam. Um, and that means that you can take the stamp pad to your stamp and ink it this way or you can go this way whichever 
way you want to ink okay and that's how you can ink large stamps as well so no matter what kind of ink I'm using or what kind of paper I like to hold the image in place for about three to five seconds and just lets the ink soak into the paper and here you can see why I love this one so much it's just such a beautiful crisp image and the other reason I like VersaColor or VersaFine is um, that you can watercolor over it it dries pretty quickly it's a pigment ink but it dries quickly it's specifically designed for really fine detail stamps um, if you ever wanted to, for whatever reason you just wanted like a thumbprint but you wanted all the ridges of your thumbprint um, this ink is going to capture all of that really really well it might your, your finger might be a little stained for a day or two but um, it's uh, that's how detailed that one is so I'm gonna grab a pen here just in case we need to reference this later <laughs> And I'm gonna write down that this one. Oh, that is such a super fine pen. Yeah, I, I grabbed the teeniest pen I possibly could there. There we go, that's better. So this one was versa fine. All right. Now for cleaning stamps, you can use baby wipes if you're a beginner, but um, you wanna at some point work into getting uh, some kind of a, of a stamp cleaner. Now there are different chemical cleaners that you can use. I don't use any of those. I only use one or both of these two things. They, you use them forever. You just wash them and get them wet. and then, Not wash them, but get them wet. You don't wash them. You just get them wet. And all it takes is that and water. That way you don't have, you're not adding to the landfill. You're not using any chemicals whatsoever. They don't hurt your stamps and they clean up really, really nicely. So this is the Stamp Chamois from Lawn Fawn. When you let it just sit out, it will just dry hard and stiff like this one. And all you do is run it under water and it will become pliable and easy to use. So this is the Stamp Chamois. And this is from Picket Fence. You can see the texture on there. I like this one when I need, when I need to really get into the cracks and crevices or I'm using uh, a sentiment stamp, something that has a little more detailed. Both of these work really well. This is more of a scrubby. This is more of a wipey. Okay. <laughs> Technical terms, right? All right. Another favorite ink pad is the Rangers Archival Ink. This one is incredible. It's acid free. It's permanent and it's waterproof. So this is, in my opinion, the ultimate for a mixed media artist. Um, or if you are, uh, if you're a scrapbooker and you want to stamp in, inside your scrapbooks, you want something that you know is archival and going to be safe. Um, so this one is really an overall duty. If you like to do watercolor, this is also a great one. This one has a much, much firmer pad. It's a cloth pad. I don't know if you can see that. It's a cloth pad, so it's much firmer. So if you're very, very like heavy handed and like to like really ink like that, that's not necessary, but, <laughs> um, this one is definitely more robust, I will say. And just like the other, you're going to hold it for a few seconds, let that ink soak through. What I like to do is say, craft warehouse is my dream store. <laughs> and that's how I know I've spent enough time on there. Okay, and look at this image. Beautiful, crisp, clean, black. Of course, stamping on the smooth paper is definitely a help for that. So this one was the Ranger Archival. All right. So those two are my top favorites. I techno I use this one a little more often, but they both are fantastic. Um, the next most popular one is this one, Memento. Comes in different colors. This guy is also a cloth pad. What is different about this one as opposed to the first two we used is that it is alcohol marker safe. So if you like to color with your Copic markers, Sharpie markers, um, American Craft Sketch markers, anything like that, that is alcohol based, you definitely need to use a very special particular kind of ink pad. And this is one of two or three out in the world that you can use. So the Memento, it's also a great stamp. It's not only for alcohol ink, so you can definitely use it with watercolor and with other things as well. So don't feel like, oh, I can only use this for, for when I'm going to do alcohol base markers. No, you can use it for all kinds of things. All three of these are great, but this particular one, as opposed to the other, is you can use with those markers too. Another great, black, crisp, beautiful image. That bee is so cute, isn't he? 
what would happen if you use an alcohol marker on a different kind of on a not safe um ink pad um the worst well the likelihood is that you would smear the ink so you would try to color this one would be yellow and he would and it would just smear and you get black everywhere the worst case scenario is that depending on the ink you're used the ink might travel up the nib of your um, alcohol based marker contaminating the entire marker so now your yellow is kind of this weird grayish yellow thing that nobody wants right all right much like memento comes the, this one hero arts intense black i am a huge fan of this one this one is um, also alcohol marker safe so at craft warehouse these are your two choices for alcohol safe markers i really like this one it's a very very intense black it also is a cloth pad and in my opinion it's just a little bit blacker it's most no it probably won't be very noticeable on this b because this is a line art, art stamp but if you were to stamp a very very solid image and compare memento next to memento tuxedo black next to hero intense black um you would notice a big difference in how dark it is and this one is a much kind of a a thicker kind of ink if that makes sense and this one's a little bit thinner so um this one definitely captures details slightly better but these are both equal in my book in terms of what they can do and how you might use them so there's no need to have both is what i'm saying pick one <laughs> all right and that one was okay i'm switching to a pencil now <laughs> that one was hero intense okay i have a couple more black ink pads here this one is brilliance and the big difference between this one and all the other black ink pads is it is a pigment but yet one that will dry on a um coated paper like a vellum or a glossy paper it's not going to dry immediately it will take about three to five minutes and so if you're stamping this for the first time or you're, you're you've got all this like really cool pearlized paper that you want to stamp your invitations on i would um, suggest that you stamp you sacrifice one paper and do it once and just to make sure that it is definitely going to dry it's not going to work on every single paper but it works on most coated papers the advantage of it being pigment is it's going to be a lot more saturated in color you're just gonna have better coverage overall and also that it is embossable then if you wanted to emboss it you could what i don't like about it is that it is um not as black as others are let me give you a close-up here so here's the graphite black from brilliance compared to my favorite the versifying you see how much darker the versifying is now if you have you can overcome that if you have a stamp tool like a um like the stamp press or a stamp positioner tool if you have something like that where you can stamp at the same um, stamp in the same exact spot multiple times and you can ink it multiple times and that will help you overcome that issue with any ink okay and then finally there is a versa craft versa craft is a specifically designed ink pad for crafting surfaces so while you can use it on paper um, you can also you, and the reason why you might want to purchase this one is you can, it is perfect for fabric leather wood and other surfaces like that it just gives you a really great impression on all those different kinds of um, surfaces so if you're more of a mixed media person or you would call yourself a crafter but not a stamper this might be the ink pad for you because you're going to be able to take your creativity to other kinds of surfaces but it's a really great black color this is versa craft but it's stamped very very nicely no complaints about that it's a nice it's a cushy foam pad i liked it it works great but again for me being more of a stamper i would i would identify as a stamper i like this one um, but if you're more of a scrapbooker or a mixed media or an all around kind of gal, <laughs> this one is great. Um, this one is, I reserve, I keep, I do own this one and I pretty much reserve it for when I really want to be able to emboss on a coated paper. Uh, um, this one, I don't use that much, but I'm not as much of a crafter as I am a paper crafter, but it is a great ink. No complaints. 
And of these two, they're basically the same. Pick, pick your favorite. I like the Hero Arts. I just feel like it's a little bit more black, and I like the coverage a little bit better. Okay, that was a lot of black. <laughs> okay. I, I think I see a question. I'm trying to see what it says. I'm, you're kind of surprised I don't have Versafine? I thought that's what I first did. Or do you mean something different? Versafine. I also have, maybe you mean this one, Versafine Claire. Versafine Claire is the sister or cousin to Versafine. And this is, all, this. while this one has a little bit oil-based, this one is pure pigment. And we're going to get into the Versafine in a minute here. But this is an excellent ink pad for sure, for sure. The Versafine Claire, as opposed to Versafine. Sisters with slightly different names. <laughs> All right. So those are black ink pads. And there are a lot of, uh, several of these you can get in different colors. And then I'm not going to stamp whites, but I just wanted to show you some white options. White is the hardest color to make, whether we're talking about paper, pens, paint, or ink pads. So I just brought you a few of what I think are the best whites. Typically, if you're, there, there are whites in a lot of different brands and, and styles, but typically if you're going to stamp something in white, you want it to be white. So I've given you a couple of options here. This is for stamping on paper. This is my favorite one. Um, it's, I, I think it has the best name, Unicorn, because it's so hard to find a good white. So this is your pigment ink in white that I think is the best. It, uh, compared to every other white, uh, every other white is going to look like skim milk, and this is going to look like heavy cream. Okay, <laughs> that's your comparison. So just cover, just a much better fuller coverage. Now, every if you're gonna stamp this on navy or black or brown or something like that, it's still not gonna be as crisp white. If you if you, if in your mind you have crisp white, then what you're gonna want to do is pair this up with a white embossing powder, and then you're gonna have crisp white. There's no ghost whatsoever. You cannot see through it. Absolutely opaque. You're gonna want a combination. Um, you could get away with, if you don't want to buy that just for that purpose, you can get away with an embossing ink and a white powder. Just use, get a white and um, opaque powder. This one is Lawn Fawn's Embossing White, which is my favorite, but any white opaque powder would work. Okay, but for stamping in white, I like this one um, on paper. If you're stamping onto a non-porous surface, you want to get the stays on opaque in cotton white. It does not, cotton white, like I said, white's the hardest color to make. This is the only color that you have to buy it as a set with the refill because it does comes without being inked and you're going to have to re-ink it every time you want to use it. Oh, here's a good tip. Okay, whenever you, you buy an ink pad, it doesn't matter, matter the brand, if you ever get one, it has this clear plastic doohickey on here, do not throw that away. What you want to do, I don't have one handy, but right here on this little, on the, on the inside of the lid, this is your swatch piece. We don't want to take that out. On the inside of the lid, put a, a goober, a little glue dot there, <laughs> and then place that on top of the plastic, uh, on top, just close it, and then when you lift it, it will be stuck to the inside of the lid. Then you'll never lose it. The reason you want to keep it and not throw it away is, is because it's a vapor shield, and it will help maintain the, your ink in there, especially since you have to re-ink this all the time. To re-ink it, you're going to open up the re-inker, shake it up first, really, and then squeeze some out, and then work it in. And work it in and work it in okay I should have shook mine up more but this was a brand new pad so that's why it looks funny but this will be white okay so the advantage of stays on as opposed to this is stays on is meant to stamp onto non-porous surfaces so things like um, plastic or glass or acetate maybe you want to put some snowflakes on an acetate for a, a shaker card something like that um, that's when those are the situations where you would use stays on opaque Fairly new is stays on pigment. This is like a modern marvel in, in ink pad technology. So this is all of the coverage of a pigment, but all of the, the solvent base of stays on. So you can stamp this onto, um, onto different non-porous surfaces like the acetate, like your plastics and glass and that sort of thing, but it will be pigment. So that means it will not be transparent. Regular stays on is transparent when stamped. This one isn't as much, but like the regular black and, and so on are slightly transparent. Um, so mean, it's kind of like, mm, have you ever used a dry erase marker? You know what I mean? Slightly streaky, you can kind of see through it. So uh, the pigment stays on is gonna give you that coverage, that full coverage. 
if you think of like makeup being light coverage or full coverage, this would be kind of, a, your regular stays on would be like a light coverage and pigment would be more of a stays on. The disadvantage is that it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. And especially if you're stamping onto like, let's say a round ornament, you got to be really careful not to smudge it. You know, you got me put it up upside down onto a, a paintbrush or a pencil or something to let it dry. And it'll take a few minutes to dry. Okay. So we've looked at blacks, we've looked at whites, we've looked at solvent based. Another specialty is the Versa Mark. Also, um, this is designed specifically for being a Versa, for being a watermark pad, but it's just a clear ink pad, and it's designed. Um, it, it, the advantage of this one is that it is ideal for heat embossing. So that's what going to be when you're using your embossing powders, and you want to stamp um, an image. Let me grab. I didn't cut any color paper, but I happen to have some brown here that'll work, I think. This will work. Since we're doing since we're doing ink and we're talking about embossing, it kind of I can work this in. So for embossing, I'm gonna use this um, anti-static powder. Sometimes you can get this in like a little baggie and you pounce it over the top. But you just kind of coat your paper with a very light dusting of that powder. And this is refillable, Re refill it with some talc or some cornstarch or baby powder, whatever you feel comfortable using. Coat that, it prevents fingerprints, but the more, more important thing is it keeps the embossing powder where you want the embossing powder to be, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and use this stamp, I think. Oh, I can go this way because I have full, Access. So I'm going to put this stamp pad where I want it. The stamp, I mean. Clean stamp. I'm going to put my press over the top. Press down to pick it up. And I'm just going to make sure my paper stayed in the right spot. Okay, so to heat and boss, you don't have to use a big platform like this. You can do this with a regular stamp pad or stamp um, acrylic block too. So I'm going to ink this up with the Versa mark and when the first impression you'll see will be the watermark which is its intended look which is just to take whatever color paper you're using and make it slightly darker. All right. Very nice. So that's what it's intended to do. So you can imagine I could stamp this all over some paper and make a cool background, um, just something sort of subtle. But since I want to heat emboss it, I'm gonna grab a little catch paper. This is just some typing paper. You could use a coffee filter, or if you have a fancy little um, uh, container to capture the excess, you can. You're just gonna sprinkle your embossing powder over the top of the wet ink and shimmy it on down, shake off the excess. It's helpful maybe to have a clean paintbrush if you got a little where you didn't want it. All right, that looks good. And then I'm going to return this powder to the jar and then we're gonna use our heat tool to heat up the powder. It will melt into the ink underneath and then raise up the design creating an embossed image. You can heat from the top or the bottom, whatever you want. I have not turned my, my embossing gun on today, so it's gonna take a little minute to turn on, to heat up. Embossing is one of my favorite things to do. It's just, it never gets old. I mean, it's been around for decades, but it is just, it's so fascinating to watch it happen. And of course you can get embossing powders in metallics and in clears and specialty uh, different designs. You can mix and match your, your embossing powders. Get yourself a new, get yourself a new, here we go, can you see it? A, a clean container and you can mix half and half with different colors and make your own custom mix. You can mix glitter into it if you want to, just don't do more than 50% glitter. You can mix in pearlex powders to get like some iridescent shine. And look, now we have this beautiful raised embossed design. And now that is white, 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 right? That looks awesome. Ha, huh. awesome. <laughs> so punny. 
Okay, so that was a Versamark. There's a lot of other fun things you can do with the Versamark. It's actually like um, a, uh, a jack of all trades. It, not only can you do the watermark and the heat embossing as you saw, but you can also stamp it and then just ever so lightly with like a Q-tip or like an, uh, uh, a light, um, like an eyeshadow palette, um, you can just gently rub your eyeshadow or chalk over the top and the, the design will attract the, the ink pad will attract that that intensity of that pigment of that of the eyeshadow or powder that you're using your chalk and it will um the finished look will look like a chalked watercolor it's very very pretty so a lot of fun things you can do with that so far of everything we've used to me must haves are one of the blacks i like this one and the versa the versa mark and this one these three i use more than all of those put together <laughs> Um, with the exception, lately I've really been into alcoholic coloring, so this one's kind of making an, a regular appearance in my in my arsenal. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about color, huh? All right, um, so there's a couple different things. So there's dye based, and then there's pigment based, and then there's hybrid. <laughs> so let's look at some dye base first. So there's all, all different brands. I'm just I just got like a couple here. So this is Distress Ink. I think there's, I don't even know, 60 colors or something, a bunch. Um, you can get them, in, you can get pads like this. You can get little sets, like this is a really cute set from Hero Arts of four graduated colors. Great for color layering. Um, you can get them in a ombre, which is actually three ink pads in one. And there's a unique way to ink that, I'll show you how. But, so these are dye based, so the are, um, they, the advantage to a dye-based ink, and it could be other brands too, if it's a dye-based ink, it's going to dry fast. Okay, so that's going to be an advantage. Also, the colors typically are bright. Uh, let's get some, let's do some stamping with it. Let's try, the thing I don't like about dye-based is that they can, especially Distress Ink, um, it can kind of beat up on your stamp a little bit. I don't, these hero ones are pretty good though, and I don't think that'll be an issue, but if I were using a much bolder um, image, it could, it is potential that it could um, beat up. And all that really means is it would be more helpful to you if you were to um, use a stamp platform so that you could ink it again, just in case. But for fine line stamps, it does pretty well. Look at that. Pretty color. It's fun to have color now, right? Um, and then let's do. This one. So see, you can get black in different in different kinds of ink too. Ooh, that's a pretty color. That one is Mermaid Lagoon. Pretty color. Okay. So Distress Ink is reactive with water. So if we add water to this, the color will bleed. Now that can be a good thing because what I typically use this ink pad for is I color it onto, I put smoosh it onto something non-porous like a paint palette, my glass mat, something like that. I add a little water to it and then I either will use a paintbrush and pick up color and paint with it, or I will use this as like a little swimming pool to dip my, my stuff into. Let this dry, then I have a really cool custom background. So for me, that's how I use Distress Inks more than I do stamping with them. Um, there's a lot of, of, of um, techniques you can do with Distress Inks that are more about aging or, you know, sort of getting that faux distressed look, hence the name distress. Okay. And we could do an entire couple of hours on just distress ink alone. That's how, in, how incredible it is. Um, but I'm not gonna, we're, we're just sticking to the super basics here, right? Let's talk about the ombre. It can be a little bit intimidating to use and there's definitely a right and a wrong way. So I'm gonna get just a slightly bigger piece of paper, I think. Okay, and I'm going to try to make sure that I got this guy pretty clean since I'm going into some light color. There we go. If your stamps 
our stain that's a that is a sign that you love your stamps if your stamp chamois is stained that's a sign that you love your stamps don't be ashamed of staining <laughs> okay so this one like i said this is an ombre you can get these in different kind of color combinations but it's actually three cells three different ink pads just happen to be glued into here side by side and there is a very slight uh, line or break between each ink pad can you see that so if you take a stamp and this guy's not quite big enough i'm gonna have to go this way if i just take him and ink go straight down to pick up ink and lift and go over here and stamp him you're gonna see those lines and those breaks right or you can do it so that's not necessarily wrong but if we want an ombre look at the lid the lid is not striped it is ombre right it fades from one color to the other put it in the middle and then just slightly walk it back and forth i'm not going far i'm just going slightly into one color to the other tap 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 walk 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 and then when we stamp it this time we should have much better and we do much better fade from one to the other i'll compare it to the there you go you can see both see how we have the 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 yellow pink orange look and then here it's like a nice fade from one to the other so that's the proper way i will say that we have had sometimes this is not one for kids <laughs> because if or just you don't want to go crazy on it because if you're going to ink like this all you're doing if you just take your ink your your stamp and ink 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 and mix it mix it all around or ink this way blindly you're gonna mix all these colors together and this is just gonna be one color now it's just gonna be mud you're not you didn't buy you did not buy an ombre for mud so you need to maintain the integrity of your stripes by being careful and just lightly walk it back and forth <laughs> okay I sound like a school mark don't do that <laughs> All right, so that those are that's dye ink. And if you guys are asking questions or giving or putting comments, I appreciate that. If I haven't seen your comment, I will try to go back and answer those later. Um, also, if you have um, any uh, questions or your own comments or you know, please tell us what your favorites are. That would be great. Okay, so we're gonna so we did dye. We'll come back to hybrid in a minute. We're gonna move on to pigment look at all these gorgeous colors now i just happen to have my favorite pigment here which is versafine claire um but you there's all different brands of pigment pigment is slow drying slow and it is ideal for direct to paper techniques um for so if you like to use like blending brushes or blending foams or you like to do stenciling or you just like to to play like that where you're putting the paper the ink directly on the paper this is incredible also if you like to heat emboss pigment ink is ideal because it stays wet longer so all these beautiful colors you probably aren't going to put white a white opaque powder over that like i did earlier because that's just going to be white but if you get yourself a clear embossing ink then i can have embossed this embossed um green color the pink i can have any color i want embossed if i just use clear so that's awesome the other great thing about pigment ink is the colors are so intense um they i mean hence the name pigment they are pigmented for sure really amazing colors and so yes they do have a great black if so, i think somebody was asking about that earlier let me make sure this guy is clean And I'm really attracted to this color right here. This is Warm Breeze. Oh, another really cool thing. These have the, a really amazing um, lid. So if you look at it on the side, you see it kind of looks like a sandwich almost. I love that because it really sinks down into that groove right there. And so it really does create a very strong closure. It doesn't snap, but you can feel it. When you try to open it, you can feel, yeah, that was closed. I just like that. I feel like it gives um a really uh secure closure and keeps the ink pad nice and, and juicy juicy is a technical term <laughs> yes hana <huh? laughs> look at that color that is so pretty 
so pretty. And the other thing that I love, one of the reasons why I prefer VersaFine Claire in my pigments is the coverage. It is really an intense coverage that I have not found a, a comparison for. I'll give you an example. So I had, this was a couple years ago, I had a light brown pattern paper that had white snowflakes on it. Okay, so I bought the paper in that, that's what it was, brown paper with white snowflakes printed on it. And I took the Versa Claire in the pine cone color, which is a very dark brown. Oh, look at that blue, it is brilliant. Wow, what's that one called? Paradise. Um, and so then I inked up a solid image, so a solid image deer, like a silhouette, in that brown Versa Claire color. And when I stamped over white snowflakes, it, you, the coverage, and this was just one impression, I didn't use like a fancy platform or anything like that, just one impression. It, the coverage was so complete, the color so opaque that you could not see white snowflakes poking through from underneath that ink. It, I was like, wow, <laughs> talk about falling in love. That was amazing, amazing. Okay, so I did a few of those colors. You can see the color is just so vibrant and pretty. The pi uh, pigment is incredible. The other reason, and the final reason I'll say, uh, why I really like VersaFine Claire pigment is because of all, including, e even including my de dear and dear favorite embossing ink. For a pigment ink, these stay wet a long time. They will feel dry to the touch and it doesn't smear, but I can still put embossing powder over that. I will prove it. I'm gonna put white because that's what I have handy, but so it's not it's gonna I'm gonna ruin my beautiful color here, but you can put white over well any embossing powder over the top and look, it's still look at all that embossing powder is on there now on all those colors. And, and I took my time stamping. I stamped that one of several minutes ago, didn't I? And so it really stays wet a long time and allows you that chance to heat emboss if you want to, which is really cool for mixed media projects. And you want to get like, you're going to do a whole like background and then you want to emboss it. Really cool. I love that about VersaFine Claire, VersaFine Claire. Okay. And now finally we talk about distress oxides. Oxides are a, a, a hybrid. They're, they're partially pigment. They're partially dye. They're their own unique thing. So we have these in 60, 70 colors. I think there might be a new color coming. That's, that's the rumor. I don't know. <laughs> but um, these are amazing. Uh, when it comes to color ink, um, this is my go-to. I pretty much use this one exclusively. As much as I love VersaFine Claire, um, I just love all of the different techniques I can achieve with the Distress Oxides. When I said I could spend two hours on Distress Ink, you could spend twice that on Oxides. They're just amazing. Um, so the reason they're a hybrid is, well, what, make, what makes them great about being a hybrid is they don't take forever to dry like a uh, pigment can feel like. They don't dry so fast that you can't do anything with them like a dye ink. So they're kind of that great hybrid. And the other thing is they are ideal for stencil use or for using any kind of your different kinds of applicator tools. Um, they, uh, because of the pigment, it stays on top of the paper a little bit longer. Pigment ink stays on top, dye ink, dye, you know, goes in and dye and dries really quickly. Where a pigment wants to sit on top and it takes its time. So the pigment portion of the hybrid ink in an oxide is that it um, gives you that blendability, plenty of time to blend colors. You can infuse regular ink into oxide and create new looks and different things. Those are really fun techniques to do. Number one way I use this almost exclusively is that whole ink on a palette, make it into watercolor, and then I either paint with it or I drag paper through it and make my own um, backgrounds, that kind of thing. That's a personal preference. However, um, if we're talking about using them with, with stamps, the big difference between a, the dye ink or the oxide is the oxide, because it has that little bit of pigment in there, it is much more fr stamping friendly. So it clings to the surface of your stamps a lot better and gives you the um, the chance to, look at that, pretty. Gives you the chance to uh, uh, ink 
without seeing it bead up on the ink. When I say bead up, I mean I mean B E A D, like little bubbles beading up on top of your stamp. And you just know when you stamp it, it's going to look all spotty. So I like that these don't do that. I have, I didn't even stamp this one yet. This is a cute little sentiment from that B, from that B set. Yeah, see that? You are beautiful. So yeah, these, you can ink with these. You can do all the watercolor techniques with them. You can mix and match. Um, you can blend them with each other. All that good stuff. So, uh, in conclusion, if you are going to, if for me, if I'm going to suggest things to you, if you're going to buy, um, colors of ink, I would get oxide because you have the most breadth of colors. Um, they are, they do stay wet long enough to be able to emboss, not as long as a Versaclair, but they stay long enough to emboss. So if you want to emboss, you can, if you want to stamp, you can, if you want to do the watercolor techniques, you can, um, you can even stamp these on other colors of paper they won't they won't necessarily be this exact same shade but you can see that you've done it whereas a dye ink you wouldn't be able to so these are just a really good all around for color this is what I like they're great for color um, for color blending for those color layering stamps distress oxides would be my choice for color for black it would be VersaFine is my number one if I could only have one ink pad this is what I want but a lot of people would argue this is what they want, so I'm going to put that right side by side. <laughs> and then I definitely use Versamark a lot, particularly for embossing. That's my preference. And lately, I've really been into Hero Arts Intense Black, but this is very similar in makeup. So these would these I pretty much exclusively use just for when I'm going to do alcohol marker coloring. Um, I use both of these when I'm going to do any pretty much any other kind of coloring, watercolor. Um, uh, coloring with like this is great too if you're going to then color in with these or if you're going to color with markers or anything other than alcohol based markers um, I would use those I rarely use this but this would be great for crafting other surfaces fabric and wood but it also works for, for paper so if you're a general crafter this is the black I would get if you're a stamper this is the black I would get if you're a mixed media stamper and um, scrapbooker I would get this one all right <laughs> And then there's one other ink pad. I don't know where it is. It's called Contour. And it is a um, very, very, very pale gray. Very pale. You can almost not see it. Um, and that's intentional. Uh, so that when, if that's for a technique, uh, for one particular technique called no line water coloring. So it just gives you a very, very faint um, image that you can then follow along with your watercolor pencils or watercolors so that you have a where it's supposed to be but it never looks like you stamped it when you get done it looks completely like you are just the absolute artist and you just hand painted it but really you had the secret little guide that only you could see <laughs> so that was that that would be versa craft sometimes a ink pad comes with these little swatch stickers and they are meant to be put on whether you store your ink pads this way or this way or this way so that you can see your color and then you could actually write on there if you want to if your ink pad doesn't come with one you can make them with sticky labels and paper some people like to swatch out their ink pads so they would take some white paper and either stamp or rub their ink onto that and then cut it out and put those little labels on their pads depending on how they store them most people um most Let's see, how do I say this? Um, the common thing that most people do in storage is storing their stuff like this because they want to see all of their um, labels. Because any other way is kind of hard to see what you've got, right? And that makes perfect sense. But no matter what kind of ink you're, pad you're using, most ink is, ha is gravity and it's going to sink to the bottom. So it might, you might, if you store all yours on your side, it's going to sink to that bottom side. Um, so for myself, I almost exclusively store all of my ink set pads upside down. That way I know that the ink is ready to go when I am ready for it. Um, if you have an ink pad and you feel like, gosh, I haven't used this in a while. It seems like it's dry. Try turning it over. If it's still dry the next day, it is dry. It's not coming back. There are things called ink refreshers. Um, 
this really is just a spray that you put on there and it'll give you a handful of more impressions. They will never be as good as, they, as it is the real thing. I would just get a new ink pad. You can get reinkers for basic design for blacks mostly for like the versifying the archival. So you can get some reinkers, but usually it's only a dollar more to get a whole new pad. And so usually people just go for a whole new pad. The one ink that you really don't have to do upside down is is the oxides and the ink and the distress inks because the ink, especially the oxides, because the ink is suspended in there. And so you can really just kind of just pressing it will give you the ink. But just for but I still store mine upside down. That's just me. That is just my opinion. Okay, I'm checking to see if I have any other questions. Hopefully you guys learned something. Okay, Cindy, yeah, you like diversifying Claire. Okay, good, good. I did have it. You might try to reapply your powder. Handle the card. Oh, uh-huh. Thank you, Sunny. Okay, we're going to keep this video available for you so you can watch it anytime. We probably will replay it at some point um, because it's just kind of your 101 information. We've done a series of 101s here this month. You can go back and watch the stenciling one. That one was really a lot of fun. Um, we're going to do, I think next week we're going to do blending tools 101. So that's going to be fun. That'll be next week on Wednesday. All right, you guys, thank you so much. I hope you learned something and happy crafting. Bye.